So right now I'm currently a platoon leader in Charlie Battery. Uh, so I'm in charge of approximately 40 soldiers. I own three guns, three cats, three PLSs. Um, and basically I'm just supervising a firing platoon within uh, the Field Artillery Battalion. So well, Prior to this, I was a target acquisition platoon leader in uh, 210 uh, headquarters. Uh, brigade in uh, Camp Casey, South Korea. So I worked with Q-53 radar systems, Q-50 radar systems, and I also did a uh, survey with the iPads G for, for the brigade. After that, once I moved to Fort Stewart, Georgia, I was the headquarters battery executive officer. Um, then I moved to be a fire support officer for Bravo Battery 269. And now I finally took over the platoon leader job in Charlie Battery 19. Right now, this is probably the most technologically advanced piece of equipment I've worked on in my short four-year Army career so far. The system itself is, is very impressive in terms of the differences between the older model and, and this model. So the improvements uh, made to the Alpha 6 to develop the Alpha 7 increases uh, the lethality because one, we're able to move faster so we can keep up with the fight and continue to push forward. Um, additionally, the survivability of the vehicle itself has been increased greatly, which is important for our troops. Um, we can stay in the fight for longer. I think the, the biggest experience for me being a part of the modernization with this brigade is just realizing the speed at which the Army is progressing, like technologically. Um, they're definitely keeping up with, with the times. So I was assigned to the Joint Assault Bridge. Uh, I came here from Hawaii, so all the old vehicles were pretty much gone, and the process for remodernization was all the new vehicles were arriving. So I got to see a Bradley, that was pretty cool, and then they put me through the JAB OpNet, the Joint Assault Bridge course. So I got to learn all about that. I've never been around track vehicles, so it was a good opportunity to learn something new for my career, and then just getting that knowledge to teach uh, younger soldiers, being one of the first. I'd say the coolest thing is the it's a 15 ton bridge and it's able to deploy in about two to three minutes. So I think that's pretty cool. And it has a hydraulic power unit, a diesel motor that piles all the hydraulics on the vehicle itself to put that bridge out and deploy. We're ready to go. We're the iron fist of third ID. I mean, we have all this technology. We're able to employ it, get the training, get the soldiers, soldiers what they need to do their job successfully and accomplish the mission. All of our old equipment was getting outdated and it's nice to have this new equipment, get training on it, be able to teach the younger soldiers about it and just be up to date with times with like everyone else. So it's it's really nice. It's Equipment works good. I take a lot of pride in it, getting a new piece of equipment, learning this equipment and being able to put, push down that knowledge to other soldiers. For me, I have a lot of pride about it. So. Today I'm just uh, illustrating uh, this new vehicle, uh, the new next generation that's replacing the old ten, uh, 1068s or the 577-113 series, um, which is the old analog vehicles. Now because of technology and what's going on, so now we're going into this new advanced vehicle This goes into digital uh, uh, environment. The biggest thing in this highlight is uh, this vehicle comes with five variants. You have your Miss Command, your motor vehicle, your general purpose, and two types of medical vehicles, your medical treatment and your medical evac vehicle. That's one of the, uh, uh, the advancement. Also the, the, uh, the armor protection, uh, the, the speed uh, and the survivability system, the upgrade enhancement of the survivability for our soldiers today. The biggest takeaway for this vehicle is that it can keep up with the modernized uh, Bradley and the tanks uh, due to its speed, uh, the weight of it, uh, the upgrade for us, the survivability. Uh, it can keep up with those uh, uh, our forces because of the capabilities that the vehicle, this vehicle has. Um, also with our soldiers getting wounded and, and uh, if a soldier get wounded with the mission, uh, medical vehicles, medical treatment, they can treat them on the, on the move as well. So they don't have to, they can treat those soldiers there on the spot and having to wait to be medevac. They can do that with this new medical vehicle. So the commonality more aligns with the Bradley because especially when it comes to replacement parts for the vehicle, they're there so they don't have to wait for a special type because of the vehicle. 
we have them on stock on handy so there's no no breaks in the mission because of that commonality with the uh, Bradley chassis. The biggest thing is going to provide that protection, that survivability, and the quick uh, reaction to any threat based on this new vehicle. It provides the, the fighting force with that capability to sustain that unit and not having to wait because of the, the older version of the 113s because of the lack of the power and analog system. Because of the advancement of the, 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 the enhancement of the vehicle and the survivability, the protection that it provides to our, our forces, there's going to be a better platform time for our soldiers based on our threat in today's battle in our world.